Welcome to Next Game's Intense Ambuscade series. This video covering the September 2021 Ambuscade Volume 1 against Porogos. Now in this video I'll go over the key item acquisition for this month, then I'll go over an overview of the battle strategies I recommend for taking this month on, and then I'll show you multiple battle examples, five in total, going over a variety of strategies. Let's go into the key item acquisition for this month. Now this month you're going to need a single frog kill for your first run of the day, or three frog kills if you're doing multiple runs in a single day. Now I recommend heading for Marjami Ravine, Pivik number two. Now I like this location, as you can get your key item for volume number two here this month as well, which is one or three bird kills. Now for it, De Hentenel, the frontier station there is also a great location as it puts you near a number of frogs if you're on more populated servers. Next, let's move on to battle strategies and what's your experience this month. First, the single enemy you need to defeat is a Boceto Nocturna, which is a black mage type mob. Now this NM will use fire and water based spells, and the harder and the difficulty you get, the stronger these spells get. They will be both single target and AoE in nature. Now starting on the easy difficulty, the Nocturna can also cast Impact, and starting on difficult, Kasutra. Now, the Bozetta Nocturna is also immune to Gravity, Stun, and Lupens. Additionally, Chain Spell will normally be used somewhere around 70-80% to 80 hit points from my experience. Now the Nocturna is going to use all of these standard Porogo spells and abilities. However, the two that you need to pay special attention to in this fight are Providence, this is going to summon five helper frogs that must be defeated in order to win. It will also restore a good amount of hit points, usually 20 to 30,000 hit points, to the main NM. Also, if the frogs are already summoned, this will wake them if they are slept. Which brings me to my next point, you can sleep these frogs, but in my experience, they definitely do not sleep for long, especially since Providence will rewake them. Now in some runs, I don't see him use this ability at all, and in others, he uses it repeatedly. So it's just going to be up to chance whether or not you see it. I will say, if he does happen to use it, you want to try and stall on those extra frogs as long as you can, and keep your focus on that main NM. He is going to be the source of all of the problems in this run, and you need to dispatch with him as quickly as you can. And frankly, he doesn't have that many hit points, so even if he summons them at 80 or 90% hit points, you usually only two or three minutes away at most from being able to deal with them. So you just need to stall them for a short period of time. Now truthfully, all of that is actually relatively easy to deal with, but this next ability is what brings all of the challenge to the run this month. And that is the ability Quenching Hammer, which is an AoE ability that will go up to 30 feet away and must be avoided at all costs because it's going to fully dispel every single buff that you have. It will also reduce everyone's magic points to zero but the main thing to remember is this ability is only going to be used if you have a Rune, Paladin, Dark Knight, or Blue Mage in your party. Also, if you have Songs, Rolls, or Geo buffs on you, this ability is going to outright kill you and do large amounts of damage to you, upwards of many thousands. However, if you can make this ability not go off, this run is actually rather trivial. So what this pretty much means is this month, in your parties, you cannot use a Rune Fencer, Paladin, Dark Knight or Blue Mage. It also means that you cannot use any Bard Songs, Corsair Rolls, or Geomancy. So pretty much those seven jobs you just can't bring with you. Also, this goes all the way over to Trust. And some of the Trust that you would think you could use, you definitely cannot. You cannot use Monboro or Sethus as it sees them as tanks. For whatever reason, Yignis also triggers it. You also, of course, can't use any tank other than the Ninjas, so Gesho, and Arc HM are the only two you can use this month if you need tanking support. Obviously, you also cannot use Omiya, Joaquim, or Katada, as they will also trigger it. Therefore, you pretty much just have to rely upon your healing and your ability to tank both the main NM and all of those adds while you deal with the main NM this month if you are solo. Now, there are multiple ways we can deal with all of these rules that we just put forth that we need to follow this month. First off, I have to point out that Ninja is a phenomenal asset this month. Even when I completely ignore the trust that I should be using and allow this nasty move to continually go off, I'm still able to continually beat this on my Ninja on the normal difficulty, and I've not lost yet. 
This was even true of the easy difficulty, using my ninja and not allowing him any gear swaps, or use of any gear that does not come from Ambuscade or early game content. So it really goes to show you just how strong they are this month. Now I've also been reading in the forums that Puppet Master is extremely strong this month, and if you simply send in a puppet on the normal difficulty and put them into overdrive mode, a very lowly geared Puppet Master can reliably beat this every time. Now I don't know most of the details along with that, you might want to check on the FFXIH forums for more details on that, but that's definitely another way lots of people are taking this on this month. Now if you plan on fighting your way through this, I'm finding that hate gets very wonky this month when those frog ads spawn, whether it's at the beginning or end of the run, they just start kind of running all over the place. And this is of course because we don't have our main paladin tanks that are tanking for us as they normally would be on these disciplines. This can make solo runs on DD jobs and mage jobs rather hectic this month. You'll see an example of what I mean on my red mage battle example here in a bit. That's okay, you can still reliably beat these runs, but it's definitely nowhere as neat and clean as some of these previous months have been on those jobs. I also want to point out that multi-step skill chains do phenomenal damage on the main boss, so if at all possible, try and fit those in, as that's one of the ways Ninja is able to cut through this so quickly. Now of course it's your choice if you want to instead switch to the five adds when they pop. Know that each of them take a three or four multi-step skill chain to usually defeat, so it's not like they have a small amount of hit points. They usually have one to 200,000 hit points depending on the difficulty you're taking this on. That's going to be all I need to go over for this run. Let's go ahead and now go into our five battle examples. Now the first one I'm going to show you is going over the exact strategy I just mentioned and not using any of those trust. Therefore, you won't see any use of the ability of Quenching Hammer. Now, the NM also does not use Providence at any point. Therefore, it's a very quick, about two and a half to three minute run. And this is what you would hope for as the best case scenario. I then, right after this, show you the exact same run, but what happens when the five frogs do spawn, how you handle that situation, and how long that run takes, which is usually about three minutes more than when they do not spawn. After those two runs, we're going to go to Red Mage to give you the perspective of what it's going to look like if a DD or Mage job takes this on this month. After both of those, we're going to go back to Ninja and show you what it looks like when my standard Ninja tries to take this on and brings in some of those trusts that are going to cause the Quenching Hammer ability to go off. With the use of the correct trust, this strategy works just fine as well and the use of Quenching Hammer really doesn't cause much problems to your fight. Then, right after that, we're going to show you exactly what's possible this month on the easy difficulty with our ninja using just ambuscade gear and ambuscade weapons. And to give it an extra bit of a challenge, I went ahead and summoned Sethtus during this ambuscade only run. Therefore, Quenching Hammer will be used, and you find that even in this scenario we are able to get past the easy difficulty this month with a lightly geared ninja. Enjoy the runs everyone.
Thank <laughs> you. 
that's going to be it for September 2021's Intense Ambuscade. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great month. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.